Hey there, welcome to module six where we're talking about promo sequences. Here in lesson one, we're talking about promo email basics. This is where we're gonna set the foundations that you're gonna apply in the future lessons when we kind of get to the nitty gritty of the different parts of your promo email sequence. So here in this lesson, here's what you're gonna learn. You'll learn how promo emails are different from the other emails you'll send. You'll discover why you need to think of your promo sequences as a whole. And you're going to learn the six rules for writing promo emails that I believe are fundamental and you need to be thinking about throughout the process. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, this is the key point I want you to get. Every email you send during a promotion is selling something. The only question is, what are you selling? But at every phase with every email, you are trying to make a sale. So I want you to keep that in mind. That means we have to talk about conversion copywriting. Conversion copywriting, that's just a fancy word for saying copy that I'm writing to get you to take an action. And I'm getting trying to get you to take the next action, whatever that is. So that's what we're going to be talking about here for a second. Because all of your promo emails are selling something, you'll be using conversion copy in the emails to get them to buy, whether it's buying an actual giving you money or buying the next action you want them to take, everything is basically getting them to convert. The important thing to understand is that conversion copy needs to be more intentional than conversational connection copy. Conversational connection copy that we've been talking about up to this point is more casual. You don't have to be as intentional with everything you say. Conversion copy, you have to think through and be very intentional about what you're doing. Now, for most of the emails you'll write in your promo sequences, you'll use the story-based email structure, but you add conversion copy between the story and the call to action. So it's hook, story, conversion copy, call to action. And the conversion copy is usually the bulk, the biggest piece of the email. So you'll see that when we get to the specific examples. Now, here are some examples of the kinds of things you do in conversion copy. You include bullets, which are just short, punchy statements about the benefits and not the features, but the benefits of the product. You'll do objection busting. You have to overcome the big stumbling blocks that are stopping people from buying. And you'll use urgency and scarcity, talking about deadlines, including bonus deadlines to spur them to take action. Those are just some of the examples. And we will get to the really kind of nitty gritty of what you're going to be doing in the emails when we get to actually you seeing examples. And I talk through what the goals are with the different emails. Now, although the majority of your emails follow the structure, a few of the sales e emails diverge from the basic story email structure because they have a story built into them. An example is a case study. Now with a case study email, you're not going to have an unrelated story than the story of the case study of your student. No, you just go straight into the case study. And you'll see that when we get to the examples. But the important thing I want you to grasp and walk away on this first point is that every email is coaching them away from the pain of inaction and toward the pleasure of the transformation. Now, if you're sitting here saying, well, my people aren't in pain. I'm not using pain literally. Anytime someone doesn't have what they want, they're in pain. And that's what we mean by this. So we want to coach them away from kind of the lack, the, the absence of what they want, and towards taking the action that will give them the pleasure that they really do want. So that's what you want to be thinking about throughout your promo sequence. Now, the next thing I want you to understand is that this is one coherent journey. So think of your promo sequence as a single coherent journey from the first invite email to the last sales email you send. That means using language, messages, and themes in the first email that will still resonate at the end. Now, let me give you a very specific example of this. In my promo sequence for badass email marketing, we use the language badass email marketer before we've introduced the course or the course name. 
And we do that to plant the seed for what's to come. In other words, by pitching you early on to want to be a badass email marketer in invite sequences, in show up sequences and things like that, then when I introduce the course, I'm essentially asking you, do you want to be a badass email marketer? Well, the seed has already been planted. So seeding your product from the beginning tends to grease the sale at the end. That's why you want to be doing it. You want to be thinking at the very beginning, how can I plant these seeds? How can I plant Easter eggs, if you will, just these little things that I'm saying in passing, language I'm using in the early stages of a promo, if you're using a launch promo, to really kind of get people ready and prepared so that they are ready to go when you actually introduce the course and begin the sale or introduce the membership or whatever your product is and ask them for a sale. So that's an important thing to think about. Now, I want to talk about this for a second. In emails that go out before the card is open, so like we'll talk about these different things you have, but like if I'm inviting you to a webinar, if I'm trying to get you to come to the webinar, something like that, in those emails, you can hint at what is to come to build excitement and make sure people are paying attention. You can say, hey, in you know, if you show up for this, I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to give you this opportunity. You're kind of foreshadowing. Now, you can do that before the cart is open. Once the cart is open, so once people can buy, you will never refer to anything that is to come because referring to something to come that is to come may make them not buy. But you can refer to things to prior emails. That can be a fun tactic. And what I mean by this is, you don't want to send an email and like in, you know, an email on day one that your card is open, talk about something that they're going to hear in the next email. Because you want them to just be saying, I'm going to buy. They, you don't want them thinking about, ooh, I might want to hear about that in that next email. You don't want to say that. But you can refer back. You can kind of refer back to themes, to things you talked about in a prior email earlier, because that kind of gives the through line. So that's kind of the concept of a one journey. It needs to be a coherent journey and you need to be thinking about this in a very intentional way. Now let's talk about the six rules for promo sequence emails. These are not probably the only rules, but these are important rules for you to think about as you are constructing your promo emails specifically. First of all, you need to serve all buyer types. See, not all buyers think like you, so be careful not to fall into the trap of crafting every email the same way. We all have a tendency to do this. We think, well, I wouldn't need to hear that fact, so I'm not going to put that in an email. What you want, what you would want in an email, what you would want to see is not the test for what you should put in every email. There are different buyer types, and we're going to talk about these different metrics here in a bit. And your emails need to speak to the different buyer types. You need to be providing information and providing emails that will kind of sway different people. Now, we, we make this mistake not just in our emails. This is a point you can take to everything else. And let me give you the classic example. I hear people say this over and over again. Why do I have to write a long sales page? I would never read this long sales page. I would never read this thing. I just want it short and to the point. Well, that's great. But some of your buyers are going to read every last word. And your long sales page is written for those buyers who want to read every last word. And it's the same thing with emails. So let's talk about some of the differences. So some buyers are spontaneous and others need all the details. FYI, I'm a spontaneous buyer. By the time I've gone through things, by the time I've heard things, I know the person, I'm like, yeah, I want to buy. Now I don't need details. Just tell me where to click buy. But there are some people who want every single question answered. They want to know every module. Although, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, you, you generally don't want to focus on the length of a course and things like that. There are people who want to know that, who want to know every last detail. And if you are only writing emails to spontaneous buyers, you're going to miss out on all the detail people. So you've got to make sure you're speaking to both. Now, some buyers are moved by pleasure. Others are moved by pain. So again, you need to, to 
hit the pleasure and hit the pain in your messaging. Some buyers decide based on emotion. Others decide based on logic. Now, some people would say that everybody makes an emotional decision, but the logical buyers just need a logical basis to justify it. To me, that's a semantic discussion. You have to be able to provide an emotional basis for people to buy and a logical basis for people to buy. Now, most buyers care about the benefits, but some have to know the features. This is where, for example, telling them the number of modules and things like that, there are people who will care about that. In spite of the fact that every copywriter is going to tell you that at the end of the day, really, it's the benefit, it's the transformation that really sells people. That's true, but some people still need to hear the feature, so you need to speak to both. Now, ultimately, your promo emails need to speak to all of those different people. That is going to mean you got to send in a lot of emails. So that leads us naturally into rule number two. When in doubt, send another email. Now, to speak to all the buyer types, you have to send a lot of emails. And you will feel like you're sending too many emails. You aren't. No matter how many emails you send, some people will miss them and complain after cart closes. It happens to me when every time I close a cart, people come to me, oh man, did I missed it. I'm just going to tell you, it's going to happen to you. So you will need to understand that no matter how many emails you send, some people will miss them. And also, I'll tell you this from my personal experience. Every time I've added an email to a sequence on the fly, it generated more signups or got more sales. Oftentimes, that last minute, oh, I'm going to add one last, last call email, those get me the most signups. Those get me, you know, a, a big chunk of sales because the reality is people are missing it. So I just want to stress this to you. When in doubt, send another email. Now, I know that's going to make you uneasy. So we're going to talk about rule number three, add an opt out link. To solve your unease about how many emails you're sending, give people the option to opt out of the promotion. Now, this is also good, even if you don't have unease, it's just a good practice because what you want to do is give people the option to say, hey, I want to stay on your list, but I don't want to hear about this stuff anymore. That way you don't have to burn your list. People who want to stay with you, but just don't want to hear about all of this, if you're sending a bunch of emails, if you don't give this, them this option, they may simply unsubscribe from your list, which you don't want, if really all they want to say is, hey, I don't want to hear about this promo right now. So here's an example. It's a PS line that was in one of my template library launch emails. Basically, I say, hey, I got more emails to come. If you love my emails, but really don't want to hear about this anymore, just click here, and I won't send you emails about this promotion. Now, the way it works, it, it, it sets a tag on that person so they then get excluded from any future emails. How you do that within your system will, will vary, but every system will give you this option just as an FYI. If they click on that button, it just takes them to a landing page that says, okay, no problem. I'm not going to email you anymore or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it just takes them to a simple landing page. And the act of them clicking on that creates an automation which puts a tag, which then will I will exclude from future emails. So the important thing is if you give them a chance to opt out and they don't, you should feel very comfortable sending them another email because you've said, hey, if you don't want to hear from me, tell me and I, I won't email you anymore. And they didn't raise their hand. So go ahead, send them another email. That then takes us to rule number four, segment your leads. Now, way back in module one, we talked about segmenting. Here, we're talking about a different kind of segmenting. During promos, you want to segment based on how engaged the people are. That's generally the kind of what you're going to think about. And there's different kinds of engagement. And, and you're going to want to capture the different kinds of age engagement in the level of engagement. So here's some segments you should think about. If you have a launch freebie, track who grabbed that, the freebie download. If you have a launch event, so if you have a webinar, a video series, a challenge, you want to track who signed up for that. If you are having that kind of event, you want to track who actually showed up, who attended. And then you want to track people who visited your sales page. Now, depending on what systems you're using, you may only really be able to track easily people who click 
on a link in an email. If you use Kartra like I do, you have the advantage that anyone who just comes there from a social media post, et cetera, if they're still kind of logged in and tracking and they're cookied, it will go ahead and track them so I can log those things as well. So I, I know everybody who has visited my sales page. Now, the reason you're tracking this during a launch is that you will send different messages in some cases based on the segment. And you may want to send extra emails to people based upon certain actions they took. Like if you had a launch-based freebie, you might want to send the, the people who downloaded that a very specific email about how that maybe, you know, let them kind of take the first step and now this is the next step. You can see how that would kind of work. But you just are doing this so that you can tailor your messaging and potentially send an extra email. That then leads us to, to rule number five, which is the natural outgrowth of that. Give more love to more engaged people. People who are showing interest in the promotion should get more attention. Now, what I want you to get from this is that people who are paying attention, who are opening every email, who visited your sales page, who are doing all of those things, who signed up for your webinar, who attended your webinar, but haven't yet bought, those people, if they're not weird like me who just like following marketing stuff and seeing what other people are doing in marketing, except for those kinds of people, those are the people who are interested. They're interested, but they haven't made a decision yet. And so your job is to get them off the fence, to help them make the decision. And you can do that by giving them more attention. Now, in the sales sequence lesson, we'll actually talk about a specific email that I suggest you send just to the most engaged people. Basically, you're going to add an email that goes to the most engaged people that really is kind of trying to help those people get off the fence. So this is kind of one of the examples of where you're giving more love, but you've got to be doing the segmenting to, to do this. So that's kind of rule five, which again ties into rule number four. Rule number six, resend to non-opens. Now we haven't talked about this before. You can do this in your weekly emails. If you're sending one email a week, you could, for example, resend it to people who didn't open later in the week. But during promo sequences, you'll definitely want to do this. You multiply the number of emails you send. It looks like you have a lot more by resending emails to people who didn't open. This will come up mainly during the invite sequence, but it can come, you could use it in other places as well. All you have to do is change the subject line. And if there's anything in the email that is date specific, like you say, the webinar is happening in two days, you need to obviously change it if you then send it again the next day. But those are the only things you change. You just resend it to people who didn't open as a way to kind of get them maybe to open it the second time. That's the point. Now you can use this tactic anytime there is an open spot on your promo calendar, like that you're not going to send an email. You should be resending one of the prior ones to non-opens to fill the gaps. So that's rule number six. Now we've talked about a lot of things here, but the key lesson takeaway that I really want you to be thinking about is that promo emails are fundamentally different because they are all sales emails and you need to coach the transaction in every single email. That really is the overriding thing that you'll see as we go through the future email or the future lessons here in this module. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, you'll learn the distinct sequences that are part of a promo. I'm going to kind of map out the different pieces, the purpose and goal of each type of sequence, and when you'll use each type of sequence. I'll see you in the next lesson.